So you have found out that your rescue squad runs with the Zol, the M series Zol. So we're going to review the BLS and ALS functions of this machine. But first we're going to review the buttons. The selector switch allows you to choose the on mode, which is for monitoring and defibrillation, or the pacer mode for pacing and you're going to select the appropriate pacer output in milliamps with this knob and the pacer rate with this knob. And with defibrillation and cardioversion, here is your charge button and your analyze button when you're in AED mode. And here is the energy select when you are choosing your joule setting for synchronized cardioversion and defibrillation. And of course, your shock button. So here we have a few more buttons. The lead button determines the selection of EKG source, such as lead 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVF, AVL, and paddles or pads. The size button allows you to change the display size of the EKG signal. The alarm suspend does exactly what it sounds like. It suspends or deactivates the audible alarm and the recorder allows you to start and stop the printer. Now these are called soft keys and correlate to whatever the menu shows on the screen. And this controls the beeper volume of the QRS and pulse, and this controls the brightness and contrast in the screen. The summary button retrieves stored patient information and prints it out as a summary report. The code marker allows you to add time-sensitive events to the patient's record. And finally, the NIBP is the non-invasive blood pressure button. By pushing this, it spontaneously takes a blood pressure. Here is our paper tray for the recorder, our data card and PC card modem, and where our blood pressure plugs into the monitor. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and turn this sucker on, and there we go. So the first thing that we're going to do is take a non-invasive blood pressure. It's going to show up right around here, and we're going to go ahead and push the button. As you can see, our marker is getting longer and longer, which means that it is pumping up the blood pressure to take the blood pressure. Now, while it's doing this, let's go ahead and play with some parameters. I've already selected the NIBP, so I'm going to hit enter. The NIBP stat allows you to take as many blood pressures as it can in 5 minutes, up to 10 blood pressures. NIBP auto allows you to take the blood pressure right now. The cuff inflation sets the starting cuff inflation that's normally around 160 for adults. Auto interval is how often it takes the blood pressure, and return takes you back to the menu. So we'll go ahead and hit return, and it takes us back to the main menu. And as you can see, our blood pressure has been taken 142 over 75. And we've also set up the SpO2, which is at 99%, which is great. And it also shows the heart rate of 53. I now want to go into an advanced life support mode because I want to look at waveform capnography and EKGs. So I'm going to come over to our manual mode button and I'll go ahead and hit it. It wants me to confirm the manual mode. Yes. And now we're in manual mode. I'm going to hook up our four lead EKG. There we go. It's showing up on the screen. Now this screen only shows one lead at a time. So here it is. It's already in lead 2. If I want to change it, I'm going to come up to our lead button, hit it once. We're now in lead 3. Or AVR. I'm going to hit it again, go for AVL. We'll hit it again for AVF. Or we could change it to our pads if they were connected. Lead 1. But I think I'll change it back to lead 2.
So we're going to go ahead and hook up our CO2, plug it in in the back here, and great. So it says it's warming up. We're going to put the nasal cannula on the patient and wait for our numbers to plug in. And there we go. There they are. 42 in the millimeters of mercury, and they have a respiratory rate of 18. Now I want to see the waveform of the capnography. What we're going to do is come down to our button, Wave 2. We're going to push it once, and it automatically sets up the CO2 waveform right below the EKG. This is very useful in diagnosing asthma and that your intubation is correctly placed. Now let's say we wanted to check out our SpO2 monitor. We just hit wave two again, and look at that. We got a nice waveform, 100% of SpO2. To get rid of it, we just hit wave two again. So we're gonna go ahead and do manual defibrillation. We have a shockable rhythm that is on the screen, and first thing we should do is change our joules setting. Our sync is off, so I'm gonna go to 120. No, we're gonna go up to 200 joules, and we're gonna charge, make sure everyone is safe and away from the patient, and we'll go ahead and push the bright yellow shock button. But for this demonstration, we can't do that. We're gonna go ahead and cancel it. So you have a patient who is a symptomatic bradycardia and they're in a third degree heart block. We really need to pace this person. So we'll switch to pace and you notice that we're in the pacer. We have set pace on the screen and pace again right underneath EKG. So we're going to change our pulse rate, our pace rate to 80 because that's in my protocols. And then you're going to increase the milliamps until you receive capture on your screen. Now, sadly, I don't have the ability to show you this, but you're just going to increase the milliamps until that capture is set. And of course, check a pulse. So I'm switching over back to the on because, oh my goodness, we have VTAC and the patient has a pulse and they are severely symptomatic. So we want to synchronize CardioVert. We have a sync button over here. I'm gonna turn it on. I notice that we are synced and we have little arrows at the top of every QRS. So we, we are ready to move to the next step. You want to change your joules setting to your protocols and American Heart Standards by using the Energy Select. Then we'll go ahead and charge. Make sure everyone is clear of the patient, and then you can hit the brightly colored shock button. But for this test, we're going to go ahead and cancel it because we don't have the opportunity to show you what you know the shocking looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel it by just hitting the sync button. Notice the arrows have disappeared. Let's say you want to print something. So you go up to Recorder, push it once, and it'll print your three separate leads. If you want to stop, you just hit Recorder again. If you have Alarm going off, you can hit Alarm Suspend. And our size, you can change the size of the EKG. Let's put it back to its normal setting here. And if you want to do a 12 lead, you just come over and push the 12 lead button. You have a whole menu to choose from here for the 12 lead. And once everything's hooked up, you're ready to go, you can go ahead and hit acquire. Phew, and that's how you do it.